have you ever wondered how producers make songs like a lot and surround sound? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to make them from scratch. All right, so the first thing that I did was start off with the triad, which is just this right here. Then I added two extra notes, one right here and one right here. I did this just to beef everything up and give it more depth. And also just give everything a little bit of a different tone. I took this note right here and I pitched it up a full octave. Then just to round everything off, I strummed the chords like this. And I also randomized the velocity. Now this is what the chords sound like all together. So for the preset, I went over to the Noir Pure Piano right here, and I chose the Almost Electric preset. Then on top of that, I used iHeartNY by Baby Audio. I just turned up the output just to make everything a little bit louder. And then I used Isotope Vinyl just to kind of give it an old school feel. So after making the chords with the piano, I took the MIDI from it and I put it into an organ. Now the reason why I chose the organ was because they generally have an old school tone to them. So since we're trying to make an old school type record, it's best to use sounds that kind of give off that vibe. The only real effect that I used was the EQ and I just curved it to where I wanted it to be. You know what I mean? Just kind of adjusting little sounds. It was sounding kind of muddy so I took this band right here, ducked it down. I wanted it to be a little bit more bright, a little bit more crispy, a little bit more uh, 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 uh. So I took the six and I brought it up right here too, just to kind of make everything a little bit more fresh. You feel me? So I did the same thing with the vocals. Just took the MIDI from the piano, threw it into the vocal VST and yeah, you know I mean, old school vintage vibe. Basically, whatever I said for the organ, carry it over here as well. So for the vocals, I did use Opus and I went to the Voices of Soul Bank. And I used the O preset. I ain't gonna lie, there's a couple ones that I use like religiously that are just always my go-tos. I'll let y'all know them real quick. The Oz, the Oz, this one right here, VOSA. Goaded. O is goaded for sure, for sure. Ooh is definitely goaded. Easy, easy. And then for the effects, all I did was just put on the EQ, ducking out all the lows, and then ducking out some of the low mids just to make it a little bit less muddy. And real quick, before we go to the next section, layering is super important when it comes to these soul samples. That's why we're taking these piano chords and we're layering them with like vocals and organs and everything like that. Because once you start layering stuff, it makes everything a little bit more complex, a little bit more dense, and it just helps it feel like a full record. You know what I mean? And that's the vibe that we're going for, you know what I mean? Yo, real quick, I just wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Producer Crate. They are the hub for the highest quality sound kits that you can find online right now. And each kit is personally inspected prior to it being uploaded to make sure that it is some gas. Now the drum kit that I'm gonna be using today is going to be linked in the description. And if that wasn't enough for you, they also got some free kits on the site. So make sure to go check them out. So when I create strings for loops, I really only have two different methods of going about it. One is taking the root notes of the original chords and using them as a guideline of where to put the strings, which is actually what I did right here. And the other one is to use the top notes for the original chords that we had and using that as a guideline. So here's what the strings sound like. Now, I feel like a lot of people would think that those strings came from contact, but surprise, surprise, I used Opus again. So I used this priest, I don't even know. Crescendo? Yeah, I kinda, I kinda know some music stuff. This is the preset that I used, and let's go to the effects. I probably didn't do anything. Yeah, just a little bit of reverb. By the way, I heavily suggest that you use strings in all of your soul samples, just cause in my opinion, all the coldest samples that I've ever heard, like ever in my life have strings in them. And they just, I don't know, there's just something about them. They're like really like the secret sauce when it comes to like these soul samples, bro. Now people constantly ask me where I get the vocals for these type of loops and everything like that. And you know what I mean? Like I gotta, I gotta let y'all know on the secret sauce real quick. It's Splice. Is I literally just use Splice like 50% of the time. Like honestly, if we just go right here, you just go right here to instruments, then we go to vocals, I go view all right here. And then, then you see this little genres tab right here. Boom, you wanna go down to soul. Look at how easy that is, man. Now y'all can stop harassing me. Then you'll go most relevant, most popular, whatever. And then if we just kind of like go down, you can see all these like little dope vocals and everything like that, man. Uh -huh. All right, now let's talk about the bass. 
Now, in my opinion, bass is a very underrated element when it comes to creating soulful samples. In my opinion, it's the icing on the cake and it kind of glues together the vibes and everything like that. Now with the bass, I use the root notes of the original chord and I just chopped up and put other notes in there to give it a little bit more movement and to make it a little bit more, a little bit more vibey, you know what I mean? Telling you, man, when you add those extra little notes at the end right there, it just makes everything have way more movement. It's so much saucier, bro. So the bass that I use is Ample Bass Light. This is a free plugin. You can go download it. I was not paid to say that. Then the effects. I'm pretty sure I didn't use any effects. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't use any effects at all. I usually done with the bass. Now we're gonna talk about the drums and the sound effects. Then after that, I got these two one shots off of Splice of just these, ugh, bro, 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 bro. If you can find some guitar one shots, they be enhancing the vibe like crazy, bro. Just listen to these, just listen to these. For the effects, all I did was just add this little EQ right here. Then I threw on a reverb. That's it. So after all that, I exported the loop and I threw it into this project right here, sped it up to 145 BPM. We were originally at 66 and then this is what it sounds like now. I really like this vibe when it comes to the 21 Savage stuff because it does have like the soulful vibe, but also it's, it's kind of on the darker side, you know what I mean? So it's just, I feel like this is just perfect for him. Then the last things I did to the loop was cut out all the low end. Then I also cut out a little bit of the high end. When it comes to loops that have vocals in them, I always like cutting out a little bit of the highs. It leaves a little bit more room for the actual artist vocals and everything like that. Also on top of that, I put Soothe 2 on top of the loop. All right, so let's get on to the drums now. So luckily the drums are really simple for these type of beats usually just messing with like two-step hi-hat patterns and just hard hitting 808s weights are kind of like bouncing and anything like that let me show you what i ended up doing so the first thing i did was use this clap pattern right here then i just got a hi-hat and i did a two-step pattern sounds like this right here then also I just use the shift knob right here just to make it a little bit more bouncy because it makes it a little bit more off time and everything like that. Then I added these open hats right here just to make everything a little bit more bouncy. And then last but not least, I went into the ATL Culture Trilogy Bundle. I went into the drum kit right here, got to the 808s, and I used this edit one. I'm pretty sure it's like a spins 808, but it sounds real clean and can't really go wrong with a spins 808. If you're wondering how I did this part right here, super easy. All you're gonna do is just chop up your 808 to be the length of one bar right here. You highlight it and you hit Alt U, boom. It'll bring up the little chopper feature like this and just make sure that this knob right here is all the way to the left. Then after that, I just kind of like fade in the velocities just like this right here. And all I did to the 808 to make it sound like this was just bring the out knob up a little bit just to make the 808 a little bit shorter. And then I went to the pre-computed effects and I did the boost knob up to about like 6%. I got the soft clipper on the master right here. And other than that, I didn't do anything else crazy to really make this 808 hit crazy. You know what I mean? All I did was really just get a good sample and boost it. And without further ado, this is what the full beat sound like. So with that being said, that's gonna conclude the video. My name is Devin, I also go by Infinite or Pod by Infinite. If you like the video, hit the like. If you wanna comment, throw a comment. If you wanna sub, hit the sub, you feel me? Peace out.